Hey there. So some years back when I first moved to the Atlanta metro area, I met somebody else who was new to Atlanta named Stephanie Cozy. And Stephanie was a musician from Belgium who seemed to think and talk about Sigmund Freud a whole lot. So much so that her purpose for being in the United States was to pursue a career in something that she coined tender activism. From my understanding, tender activism guides both research and individuals to look at a relationship not as an individual experience, but as a third entity created by two people. And I don't know why I'm referring to Stephanie in the past tense. I literally talked to her 20 minutes ago. So why am I telling you about Stephanie Cozy and tender activism, you might be asking, other than to subtly brag to you that I have friends in real life, which I do. I'm basically a social butterfly. In like eight or nine days, I'm going to be getting dinner with my parents. Everything's fine. Some of you who have been around for a while may remember that two years ago, I released a video that highlighted my early journey in neurofeedback, which is where I hooked up an EEG to my brain and made some music come together harmonically and then used that for therapy. This video actually led to my citizen science hobbies being transformed into professional research, which more importantly allowed my mother to introduce me as her son, the scientist. By the way, if you are not familiar with my neurofeedback video that I'm referring referring to fine. It's a free country. You could watch whatever you want. You don't need to watch your friend Ben's videos. You could watch uh, videos of people pouring soda on iPhones to destroy them. Or Jake Paul, that's probably a great channel that's way more educational than mine. So why don't you just go ahead and watch that? Look, I'm sorry if I snapped at you. If you can't tell, I am absolutely pumped full of anabolic steroids lately, and I am a bit testy. So I'm just going to link to that video in the description if you want to check it out for a frame of reference after this. And it's totally fine if you don't want to. When I was making that neurofeedback video and researching everything, I reached out to Stephanie, who oddly enough was working on a very similar yet very different project using the exact same model of EEG headbands. And when I asked her for help, she just said, here, have all of my data. And honestly, I don't think that I would have been able to finish my research without her help. So thank you. So two years later, Stephanie, along with Mike Winters and the GLAD scientist, have created a way to analyze the open sound control data that the EEG headbands output to a custom algorithm that increases the volume of music when two individuals' alpha waves are in synchronicity, which is, like I mentioned, very similar in function, but very different in application. Last weekend, Stephanie made this interactive exhibit of her dissertation and opened it up to the public. So I drove down to Emory University in Atlanta to check it out. And I wanted to bring you with me. And I even got to try it out myself. And boy, am I awkward. <laughs> So we met in like 2015, close to when we both had just arrived to Atlanta. Yeah. And I remember you being fascinated with Freud uh -huh. at the time. And, uh, and it's amazing to see that arc its way here. I was doing research on the concept of tenderness in psychoanalysis, um, like to like summarize it, Freud, called hysterics pathological because they wanted too much connection and they didn't want to like move to like genital pleasure. They mm. just were lingering and touching and kissing. And he said they are patholo pathologic because they're infantile, they're regressed or they're effeminate and they're uh, maternal. So he kind of made a connection between um, the desire for tenderness or wanting to linger in connection and it being problematic and infantile and not adult. So, well, that's actually like 12 years ago that I read that and I wanted to debunk that and critique that. And so I started my PhD. And then I saw a lot of connections between the desire for tenderness and what recent psychologists and psychoanalysts call affect attunement. Mm -hmm. It's like the first bond between the mother and the infant. It's, it's, it's a type of rhythm that they surrender to when they really bond and connect. And I was like, wow, they are really researching this and they are not anymore saying it's pathologic, but they're still looking at it as something infantile and something maternal. I really thought that 
the written language is not going to be able to give a voice mm. to the connections between us because language is built on again division and categories and this thing that i'm trying to capture the tender connection between us like like language as a form won't won't do yeah. so that's why i moved to music Right. And also, a lot of the scientists who refer to this connection between us use musical metaphors, like communicative musicality or affect attunement. Mm. And um, also, the etymological root of tenderness, ten, ton, means to stretch or to be stretched. And it has that root in common with tune and tone, tango, dance, mm. tantra. Uh, tandem. Tennis. No, I don't know. Just, let's say we're like 20 years in the future and mm -hmm. you could wear an earring mm -hmm. and that earring just behaves as if it were like an MRI mm -hmm. at all times. And you meet somebody mm -hmm. and uh, the ventral tegmental part of your brain just starts mm -hmm. flashing and all of a sudden, you know, you have an app in your phone that's like, you found somebody that is like, one. you know, whether this is for dating or business, like, do you so does that sound like a possibility to you <laughs> to where like technology could actually find that connection and refine it by everything that we know about that connection? Like, cause we know the parts of the brain that are activated. And so if we were to, yeah, do you ever think about that? I, I would, I would be very sad if something comes on the market that is like an immediate fix yeah. because it's not about that. Like connection takes a really a long time. And also you're, you're, you after spending time with someone for a while you your the results would change because we change yeah, that's like true. like yeah. if i with my roommate or her, we lived together for for 6 years and her or hormones would synchronize and hmm. sync up to each other and that didn't happen overnight yeah. but that took a long time is the same with syncing with brainwave syncing or with with people being a good fit it takes a lot of work because you first have to undo who you are, and I have to undo who I am, get rid of some of the things that don't really work in my coupling with you, and yeah. then little by little we work on it and we will connect better. Do you think that there is something that can't be measured, uh, even in, you know, in feedback? Like, do you think that there's something that's just outside of human measurement that creates a connection, or do you think that it is just part of two million years of refined evolution that has made this magic happen? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that there's something bigger to it? Not saying that it has to be like, like a you know. Soul or something different. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I didn't have to measure the connection to know that it existed. Hmm. That was the whole thing. I felt when there was a connection and when there wasn't. But I didn't see any science that was helping me make my argument and yeah. helping me say connections are important. Yeah, yeah. So when you say, are there things that can't be measured? I don't really care. I am using neuroscience and the EEG headset kind of to make a point. For mm -hmm. me, this and the neuroscience, it's kind of like the paint yeah. for my art piece. It is a vehicle through which I kind of want to make a point. I'm a, a, a feminist scientist, you know, mm -hmm. I very much critique this illusion that there's such a thing as objectivity you know mm. nothing is objective yeah. it's always subjective like the person who writes the question who's doing the scientific uh, research is coming with their own effects and feelings and how they feel that day and their whole like agenda here are some questions just a few from my discord channel who I, I okay. just I just linked linked this and I was like do you guys have any questions while well, I'm on my way over okay. um, and a good one is do you see this useful in couples therapy yes the couple is the third entity in the room right. so let's say you and i are a couple there's you there's me and then there is the couple okay and this is what my installation is trying to visualize and sonify that there is the couple you can't be like independent ben i can't be independent stephanie right. we have to give in and what we give in to is this third entity. And that's not some hocus pocus stuff. That is no, really yeah, that, that's interesting because I've, I've, I've read like a, a pretty amazing study that showed that like couples have memories that are tethered 
to the relationship and then after they split up they can't remember what happened like the memory is actually within the relationship it's amazing to see mm -hmm. the initial conversations we were having about this type of thing when we first met yeah. which which were just kind of like you know up in the air and they then it actually the turned into a real thing that's really awesome it takes collaboration yeah. because mike winters he did all the sonification mm -hmm. you know he's he's the brainchild as much as me yeah. and the glad scientist daniel sabio mm -hmm. he did the visuals there like this was a, a collaboration this wasn't just me yeah. and i really wanted to create a collaborative art piece again to move away from in academia it's like oh the, the academic on their own. No, yeah. I, I wanted to collaborate and create together. And uh, so, yeah, don't just hit me up. Also hit up Mike and, yeah. and Danny. And Morgan Freeman. He was holding the projectors that entire time, the entire yeah. weekend. He's tired. We need to give him a... He's such a yeah, sweetheart. Let him go back to his narrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. If you are interested in Stephanie's work, check out some of the links in the description. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. And by the way, if you want access to a huge community and Discord server that has everything from custom game servers to monthly music writing challenges and so on, and if you want some unreleased music that you hear on this channel and audio assets, then my Patreon is for you. You can join us for as little as $1. Okay, I'll be back soon. Bye.